All right, Fuzz Pie Guy here. You're looking at four different types of uh, dongles here. Well, four different brands of dongles uh, that you could use for uh, ADS-B. Now, I used the blue one of this guy made by uh, Flight Aware. They have an orange one and a blue one. Uh, the blue one has a preamp and uh, filter on it. This only has the preamp. This is a cheaper model, uh, pretty basic. It'll do the same thing. Don't it doesn't have a preamp, and the quality may not be as good as what this one or this one or this one is. Uh, this is made by RTLSDR.com. Really good dongle for the price. Uh, they'll work for ADS-B, but no preamp. But it does support bias T. <clears throat> this one here is a the uh, NESDR Smart, uh, made by Noelect, uh, not a bad dongle either, uh, it'll work for ADS-B, but it doesn't have a preamp, and I don't believe this one, no, this one does not have the uh, bias T if you would actually need it for the ADS-B. But uh, I used the blue one of this, works out great has a filter on board so anyway I'm going to show you how to set up a raspberry pie or a banana pie or atomic pie whatever pie orange pie whatever pie you may be using uh, in order to receive uh, ADS-B signals to uh, look at airplanes <clears throat> and upload the data to uh, FlightAware so uh, stay tuned, I'll be right back. Walk you through on how to set up a Raspberry Pi or an Orange Pi, Banana Pi, whatever you may be using in order to uh, receive uh, ADS-B signal to track uh, aircraft. So we're gonna be using a Raspberry Pi with a RTL SDR dongle. Now you can use the one that FlightAware sells or whatnot, that's up to you. And obviously you'll need an antenna. So <clears throat> I'm gonna walk you through on how to do this. So one of the first things we need to do is obviously go to FlightAware's website. And if you don't have an account, you're gonna to need to click on why join register so you can get a username and password because you don't need that so you can log in to look at your stats so the first thing we need to do is obviously install a software now there's several ways to do this uh, <clears throat> you can when you, like I said once you're at the flight aware website you can click on put your cursor over ADSB and go down to build a power what PiAware receiver. Now you can download their pre-image uh, software if you want, uh, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to do everything through command. You know, you'll learn a little bit more that way. And they have some videos here if you need, if you need to set up Wi-Fi, which uh, using the Raspbian image is pretty straightforward on how to connect Wi-Fi if you're not using a Ethernet connection. And like I said, you can use the FlightAware dongle. They have a blue one or an orange one. The blue one has uh, a built-on uh, filter, built-in filter. They both have a preamp, but the blue one does have a filter on it. The orange one does not. And once you uh, get this set up, you're going to want to come down here and you're going to need to click on claim your client so it will show up under your uh, your stat page because once you're logged in it'll show up here my ADSB and once you click on that it'll take you to your stat page so if we come over to this web page right here here's where we're going to go ahead and install 
uh, Pyware by hand other than using the pre-installed image and install the dump 1090 and dump 7978 if you are using that but uh, we're not going to be focused on that and actually here at step six you can also claim it right here which might make it obviously a little bit easier and this is a picture of what your stats would look like and here's a, a link uh, to uh, look at your uh, your personal stat page for the uh, setup that you're using so let's get started on installing the software we're going to go ahead and uh, set up the software now obviously I'm not going to walk through on how to put the image on the Pi on the SD card but uh, I think I have a video on that if you would need it but uh, I'll throw a link in the description for this website for uh, flight aware and everything but let's just go ahead and we'll do an update And as you can see, here's the commands that we need to do. So we can uh, just copy and paste this. So we need to install some the PyOware here so we can make this work. So once this is installed, we'll go ahead and now do another update. And now we need to install the Pyware. <clears throat> now you could do all that if you want, but you don't really need to use the Git anymore. So now this section here, I normally bypass this because I like to do my updates manually. And stuff so I uh, I'll just let this go but if you want to do this section just run these two commands and uh, no problem so now we need to install the dump 1090 And we're not going to be focused on the 978 because you'll need a separate dongle for that and obviously a separate antenna to receive the uh, the aircraft for that particular uh, interface. So after we're done here, <clears throat> now you, like I said, you have to have your, your uh, USB dongle plugged into your Pi. And stuff now we can do a reboot so <clears throat> once we do a reboot and you have your dongle plugged in or you can do a shutdown plug the dongle in and turn your pie back on so now that that's rebooting once it comes back up if you read here it says you might have to wait about five minutes or so you can click on this and when you click on this it will take you to a page that says your ID, your feeder ID number is claimed or whatnot. Now, obviously, it doesn't show that because I'm not signed in. But uh, it'll show that. Then you can just scroll right up to the top and click on My ADSB, and it'll show your stats. Then you're just going to need to update your uh, location and the height of your antenna. Uh, you can do it uh, manually, put it in the Latin long. So once that is done, <clears throat> we'll show what the interface. When you restarted the Pi, everything uh, has worked and your device is claimed. And you can see your stat page. You'll want to uh, set up your uh, location and the height of your antenna under your stat page to make sure it's accurate. So as you can see here, we go to the IP address of the uh, Pi with a port 8080. 
to view the uh, Dump 1090 map. Now this is the 4.0 version that just released several days ago. Uh, and as you can see, they changed some things around if you've been doing this for a while. Or if you're new, this wasn't here the last time. So if we click on this guy, we can select and deselect a lot of things here. Which is pretty nice. It, it's pretty cool the way they uh, change this around. So, <clears throat> and if we put our cursor here, we can slide this over if we want. We can select this guy to change it to a more layout view if you just don't care about the map. And we can select show map to go back. Then uh, we can select this guy here to kind of go like full screen. Then we can come back over here and click there again. And we can change the different things here. We can add the weather if we want. We can change the style of uh, maps if we feel. Now this is obviously not necessary, but if you feel like it. <clears throat> then if we come up here to the gear, we can change the unit and we can select deselect more things if we want. We can change the ring size of like your thing there. So a lot of different things they put in uh, version 4.0, especially this right here. So hopefully this kind of helps out to uh, get started into the uh, tracking aircraft. And uh, like I said, you basically only need a Raspberry Pi or some type of Pi with a uh, RTL SDR dongle and an antenna. Now you can not use a Pi if you don't want to. You can use a computer running Ubuntu or Linux or whatnot. So hopefully this helps out. A Pi is definitely a nice alternative because they don't cost very much and they're very, very inexpensive to run. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another one. And uh, don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe.